excited today because I met this gentleman at a health and wellness expo. He was like, come on over, we're doing chair yoga. And I was like, mm, mm, you know, what that warrior level, that's what I was expecting. <laughs> but we sat down in chairs, and as soon as he said, oh, take a deep breath, I was like, I ain't, oh. It was just so calming. And then as we went through the exercises, it was amazing. So I just know that I had to bring him to the health and fitness family because this is things that you need to know. He is a life and balance expert. The book is coming out soon for Father's Day. I just have to introduce Manifest Raw and we're gonna be speaking to him today. I want you to go ahead and lead us through how you even started this journey that you were on to life balance. Well, uh, I was, uh, raised by a um, health conscious family, if you will. Uh, we were um, always uh, emphasizing eating the right foods, um, doing the right things. Uh, I think my first experience with juicing uh, was growing up, you know. Um, I had those kinds of parents where, you know, we made juice regularly, so. I love it. Yeah, and so I remember when I went to college, you know, I was uh, wilding out like everybody else. And, uh, uh, but I always came back to that salad, to uh, some of the basics um, that I learned while growing up. And so when I finished uh, college at Florida Indian University, and I said, well, okay, let me um, volunteer uh, at Natural Living Health Associations here in the DC area, uh, learning about meditation, learning about herbs, learning about um, Tai Chi. Tai Chi, now I, I don't really understand what that is. All I know is I see some people going like this. Right. Outside. They look like they're swimming in right. the water, like in a group. So could you educate us on that? Absolutely. Well, little... Tai Chi means supreme ultimate. It's an internal martial arts uh, system that is practiced primarily today as a health maintenance system. Slow, graceful movements where you bring the mind, the breathing, and the body in harmony. And when you do that, the mental chatter, what we call the monkey mind, all the things that you're thinking about that you haven't done or the things that you need to do, they actually subside and you are in a grateful state of being. And they work every aspect of our being, the bones, the joints, the organs, the cells, all those things. And so oftentimes you'll see people in their 80s, 90s, early 100s just doing these graceful, calm exercises. And so I, I'm not, I didn't tell everybody, but I'll be 300 years of age um, next week. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's doing amazing. You have Absolutely. good gung fu. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, I had bought into a mantra or a mindset that, you know, um, I had to get it done. You know, every day was an emergency or an urgency. I wouldn't say emergency, but an urgency. And so if there's 24 hours a day, I need to be working 23. And I didn't know how to calm myself or get a good night's sleep. I was just on all the time. And what I found out is that um, bad habits came into play. Uh, I was calling myself a vegan, but I was eating on um, whatever I get my hands on from 7-Eleven. And, uh, you know, uh, just overindulging in foods um, that weren't quite um, healthy. And, um, and so what I realized is that life is about balance. You know what I mean? That Rest is just as important as activity uh, in that those moments of stillness of just reflection are just as important as those moments of activity. Sometimes, I'm like, wait a minute now, motivational speakers, y'all with me. Motivational speakers would be like, grind, hustle, grind, hustle, sleep, no sleep. I have an entrepreneur friend right now. We be telling each other, yeah, no sleep, because it seems as though if you're sleeping, if you're resting, you're not working. Well, that's what I bought into as well. Um, it didn't work for me and really it doesn't work for most people, but that is the mantra, the affirmation that particularly in the West, people say I'm on my grind. Well, when you think about something continuously grinding, eventually it comes to a grinding halt. So people end up breaking down because their systems are always on go. The body's not um, meant to always be on go. You know what I mean? Um, that, that rest period uh, in the evening of seven to eight hours, or at least six hours of quality sleep, is when the body makes most of its repairs. Um, but if the body is always on, the battery wears down, um, the nervous system wears down, the adrenals uh, are out of order, 
and eventually you have all kinds of health uh, challenges. And so it didn't make any sense to me to achieve uh, many of my goals just to have cancer or high blood pressure or something of that nature, um, you know, five years, seven years down the road because I had bought into a mindset that I didn't rest. Um, and so when I wasn't resting, I was eating everything that I could get my hands on, you know what I mean? Because comfort foods, um, that's the easiest way of dealing with stress. So um, uh, I found myself um, really in need of balance where I can get things done, but not burn the candle at both ends. Not only did I transform my own life, but a lot of folks around me, family members and friends and, and, and other folks, they were able to see this calm, relaxed, yet very life-affirming and productive manifest. And they was like, hey, man, what is it that you do? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So it wasn't anything that I naturally, I mean, I really had to go out and sell. It was, people saw this shift within me and how I was living, uh -huh. and they wanted to learn about it themselves. And as I see with most people, particularly in the corporate workplace, yeah, I asked how many people are stressed out. Everybody raised their hand. I said, how many people get a good night's sleep? Most people don't raise their hand. And I said, how does that affect you? Well, I'm all, I, my mind is always going. I'm always stressed out. Mm -hmm. So the studies are already proven that it's not a healthy way of living. So I, I totally understand the mindset that many motivational speakers have. I'm a motivational speaker myself. But I realized over time that mindfulness and motivation are equally as important. They're two sides of the same coin, you know. So um, if I'm always rah, 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 and you don't sleep and you gotta always be on, you know, I'm teaching something that is not sustainable for most people. Wow. So Father's Father's Day, you have you have an excuse. You just say, I'm taking a mindful break. And you go ahead <laughs> and take that mindful break. So that's great. So you were on that journey. Mm -hmm. People saw it in you. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know what you were doing. Is this the birth of energy? Absolutely. Tell energy Energy work is a um, uh, an entity, a business enterprise uh, that focuses on workplace wellness and personal wellness. Mm -hmm. um, energy, I-N-N-E-R, the letter G, work. Energy, meaning that within us is what we call that divine intelligence. And so that energy is doing the mindfulness practices. It's going in, listening within, getting those reflective moments, um, whether it's through chair yoga, tai chi, or just sitting quietly. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go out in the park. I'm going to find me a place at work that is quiet. And I'm just going to disengage. And when you do that, that's when the mind... The left brain begins to minimize what we call the monkey mind. That part of the brain just seems like it's always going all the time. You actually subdue that. You see what I'm saying? So you can now get the clarity of mind of what you really ought to be doing. There was a study um, happened a, a few years ago where they realized that when the brain, left brain, is always on, um, it diminishes our brain capacity and our cognitive abilities over time. And so that's one of the reasons where dementia and Alzheimer's is coming more into play with people in their 40s and 50s is that the brain is always going. You're wearing down your brain. What do you mean? Like always going? Do you mean just thinking of ideas? Always thinking of things. Never it, taking a break? Never taking a break. When I go do these corporate, these energy work presentations, people say, you know, I can't stop thinking. I can't stop thinking. So 11 o'clock, they still thinking about what they haven't done earlier in the day. They're thinking about what they need to be doing the next day. And when they go to sleep, get tossing and turning, having nightmares about, you know, computer processes, hamburgers chasing them, you name it, so forth and so on. They can't stop thinking. You know what I mean? That we weren't made to be like that. And through the increase in technology, which has its benefits, people have moved into a mindset that they always have to be on. You see? And that's not how the body is made. We need those reflective moments. We need those, those, those times throughout the day where we disengage. It doesn't need to be a process where you say, at the end of the week, I have not had any calm moments. I need to get a massage. Or at the end of the month, I need to take care of me. No, you need to take care of you every day. Every day. Self-care is health care. So that, those moments where you fill up your cup, now your cup can run off over. But if you're always on exhaust fumes and you're always 
thinking about the next thing, your cup is low. So you don't have anything to replenish your body, your mind, your spirit, so forth and so on. So you have to take time throughout the day to fill up your cup and then do your work from that cup that is run over to, to the meeting, to the business project, to uh, the contract, so forth and so on. And so it's a different approach of, 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 of working. And it's one that's far more sustainable to, to say, okay, let me just always be on. Mm, so like, I, I don't do this. Mm. I'll just be real, I be on. Mm. As soon as I jump out the bed, it's mm. time to go. So what are some of your suggestions for maybe a tip that we could do just to give us a reminder that, hey, give yourself a mindful break today. Give yourself a recharge. Some of us, which is going, going, going. Pick up the kids, go to school. Absolutely, I would say start your day um, and make the start of your day uh, a a mindful moment. Um, oh, the beginning. That, that be beginning of your day. As soon as oh. you get out of bed, oh. um, you can take a walk with the dog, um, um, with the children. Just walk in an area where it's calm. Um, you know, maybe do your prayers. Do turn on some relaxing music. Take some deep breaths for about ten minutes to just center yourself, calm yourself, um, and not immediately just go into that left brain mode. Um, there's a number of things you can do. You can do some stretching, you know what I mean? Some basic Stretch. yoga ex exercises. First thing in the morning, you know, don't leave out the house without. It's the American Express, don't leave out the house without. Well, these energy practices, don't leave out the house without it. You want to set the intention for your particular day and atone for your day. So when you leave the house and you're in traffic, no big deal. If the metro or the, the, the public transportation system is a little off, no big deal. Mm. So that's amazing. So energy, that business, the, the company itself, mm -hmm. energy, it offers the wellness um, for different businesses. Absolutely. Because that's how I met him. He was doing chair yoga. What else does it do? Tai Chi, meditation, um, breathing um, 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 techniques as well. Wow. Uh, we also um, provide massage uh, therapists, um, uh, acupuncturists. Uh, what else? Uh, reflexologists, um, people who massage the feet, um, nutritionists, anything that focuses on our energy empowerment. Um, we uh, provide those for businesses, for agencies, uh, as well as for other groups and people who are on one on one. You know what I mean? So if somebody's looking for a one on one meditation coach, um, we got you covered because your energy work is the most important work. When we don't learn these techniques, whatever took place at work, we take them home and dump them on the family members. Mm -hmm. I remember when I used to teach PE, I asked the students, sixth graders, I said, well, how many of y'all have parents that come home and dump their stress on you? Just about every kid raises their hand. No. Yes. Kids don't know that parents are they, aggravated. Yes, they do. Because I went through and told them, I said, well, you know, when you're not stressed, when you're stressed out, you don't let it go. You know, you are very emotional. You you uh, just dump stuff on people and we went through some of the scenarios and I asked students I said how many of y'all have parents to do that just about every kid raise his hand wow. and it, they went through some of the scenarios with that you know like wow. mom dad comes home and says go wash the dishes mom already wa well, wash them again you know what I mean and, and just get out of my way mm. you know, give me my space that kind mm. of thing and what are we teaching our children oh, wow. you know so mm -hmm. we're teaching them what not to do Mm -hmm. So when family members, uh, particularly adults, um, are calmer and they're living in a more graceful way of being, more mindful way of being, then their children and other family members automatically see that. And so it's just, you know, I'm an example, you know, of juicing and eating healthy food mm -hmm. uh, and, other, and doing the right things for mm -hmm. the right reasons. Um, I saw that with my parents and that's a major part of how I live today. What? So mom and dad? Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic resource to look into because it is to be mindful. Because I remember those days too, but we don't give our children enough credit. They're recognizing what's going on. They have stress too. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. So not only does he do those things with the company and all that information you already know is on the screen and I'm going to have it afterwards, but there's something special for the man being that it's Father's Day anyway. Um, I want you to talk about these retreats that he has for men. Lady, we can, we can come into the retreat. Don't worry, I already got a plan. We're going to infiltrate. But I would like for you to speak on what you've noticed the gaps 
that men are facing and how you help them. Well, oftentimes the women do want to come into the retreat. That's hilarious. Like, well, can can I? Can we just pray for you all? Come on the spot. Like, oh, slow up. You know, you tell me, come on now. You know, uh, you know, it's interesting because so many women are doing the personal development work. Mm -hmm. They're going to their retreats. They're in their healing circles, sister circles, and all those kind of things. And um, that same process for men has been sorely lacking. Um, but we're bridging the gap through the Sage Men. That's a group I started years ago in 2013. Um, and it's doing some phenomenal work. Um, the Sage Men, when you think of the word sage, it has a dual meaning. Um, oftentimes, an incense um, yeah. is what initially comes to mind. Cleansing and purification. Demons. Exactly. Get, that, get those, those negative energies out the way and so forth and so on. Um, so every man must go through times of purification where he cleanses his mind, his spirit, his thought process. Um, he might even do a cleanse on what he's eating, those kinds of things. And that's everybody, men and women. But we're talking about men here. And then also those experiences he's had early on in life that no longer serve him, whether some trauma, some dramas, some old relationships and things of that nature. Um, men have a hard time letting go oftentimes. Women just come in, hey, let go. in front of like 20 other women they don't even know. You know what I mean? They're just letting it out. Men come in, just come in talking about politics, talking about, you know what I'm saying, the military, you talking about talk? football games and that kind of thing. Like, come on, Freddie, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Let's get beyond that. Let's, okay. let's get what's really eating at you, that kind of thing. So, um, and so um, the sage man, um, the second meaning of the word sage is really um, a holy man, if you will, or a man who is cultivating a high level of of his um, awareness, um, his virtues, um, his integrity, uh, if you will. So when you think of a sage, you think of a person in the community or on the planet who is living with a high level of integrity, a high level of awareness. Um, they are perceived as a pillar in their communities, uh, if you will. So the sage, sage men are men who are doing the personal development work so they could embrace the highest version of themselves, the best version of themselves, and live from that. Um, not just for themselves, but examples for other men, uh, for the women and children in their lives, for those in, members in their communities, um, and men who are doing the work um, and being an example for others to do the work. And so we have retreats, uh, we have monthly uh, men's circles where we come together and we talk about issues like relationships, about mm -hmm. family matters, about our trials, our challenges, our pains, those things that we're suffering from that we need to get up and out and let go of. Uh, we do all of those things. Currently, we have a 90-day rights of initiation where uh, we, uh, on a monthly basis, we're taking the men uh, on intensives, um, place down in Southern Maryland, uh, near the water, uh, where we're doing uh, the work. We're having these conversations. And so when men cultivate all of those areas, we show up as the sage. So women, they're not lacking with, you know, um, in terms of the man that they have. They're not um, saying, well, wow, you know, he's a good provider, but he can't talk to me about anything. You know what I mean? He just mm -hmm. wants to watch the football game, basketball game, and mm -hmm. tell me to pass him a beer. You know what I mean? Get out of the way. Uh, or he maybe is a good emotional support and listener, but he, girl, he ain't providing no finances. No, we want to go to, the, we want to go on a vacation, <laughs> even if it's for a day. Yeah, I got to pay all the time. So you know, we—that's not the sage man. Okay. The sage man is bringing it across the board, comprehensive mm -hmm. manhood, where uh, we show up in all areas as the best version of ourselves. And so, any man watching, uh, we want you to join us at some of our events. Any women watching, we want to make sure, we want you to uh, support us by sharing this information with your sons, your fathers, your husbands, um, your mates, um, any of your brothers. Um, get the word out that there are men on the scene who are doing the work. Wow. 
So this is an amazing opportunity. Again, I'm really excited. So there are certain of you who know some men in your life or have some friends with some men. I would really encourage you to connect them with energy and to see the sage men because at the end of the day, we want our men to be good because we do talk about that. Well, I mean, we get in our sister girls groups and we be like, oh, he fine, but he broke. Or we be like, girl, but he got nine kids. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what kind of father is he? We have all these things, but we don't really know what could be at the really core of that man. And men, it's nothing wrong with self-development. It's nothing wrong with talking to people who's already been there. So go ahead and take the opportunity. I mean, if you're trying to make it, because you know, we, women are doing it. We doing it. So we need y'all to step it up. So I'm so excited that you got the opportunity to speak with Manifest because he is amazing and to see all of the resources that he has. Now he's going to end because I already told you that since it's Father's Day, you have some opportunities to get some free things. But I want you to speak on this book that's coming up. Absolutely. It's called Let Go and Flow. All right. The Busy Person's Guide to Eliminate to Releasing Stress in five minutes or less. Let go and flow the busy person's guide to releasing stress in five minutes or less. I want, you know, to teach as many people as possible about uh, more mindful practices that will really be life changing. Wow. We need to create a ripple effect and create a world where we're more peaceful, we're more relaxed. You know, you're enjoying life and you ain't even sweating the small stuff. All right. That's amazing. So remember I told you guys, thank you, Manifest. All you have to do is click on this link, answer these three questions. You have an opportunity. The book is coming out, Let Go and Flow. You have an opportunity to get a signed copy as soon as they're released. And for my men out there, happy Father's Day. Again, I hope you got so much from this talk because he is a wealth of knowledge. If you did not know, Manifest is the go-to his company. Link up with him because our organization is about 2,000 plus and he's come and serviced us several times doing his chair yoga. When I say, I do some of the breathing techniques. It's amazing. So please go ahead, click on that link, answer those three questions, and have the ability to get something from me and Jeff. You know, we talked about Jeff last time. You know, he's the richest man in the world right now. So thank you guys. Happy Father's Day, and thank you, Manifest. You'll find all kinds of activity, uh, information about our retreats, our monthly gatherings, just uh, articles, um, uh, research uh, about men's wellness, thesagemen.com. And so our energy work is the most important work.